I'm going to teach you how to nook knockers today Be using a nook which is a crash hook on the one side with a flattened and drilled edge on the other through the hole you will thread a soft cord which is quite silky and it's very flexible and you'll find that to thread it it's quite snug and there's a reason for that it's to ensure that it doesn't pull out while you're busy knitting your project so you, knit, you thread it through the way you would a normal sewing needle when you're busy sewing back threads or if you're busy doing embroidery what I've done to save time is I have crocheted a nipple using Cosmic K's nipple pattern and her knitted knocker as well I've changed colours to make it a bit easier to see the different stitches and that loop will be your last crocheted stitch and that will count as your first stitch on your on your first double pointed needle using the nook so what we need to do is pick up four stitches on your four first double pointed needle so that's your first one what you need to do is go through that hole which is under the V of the crochet stitch yarn over pull through through the next hole yarn over pull through and then there's your next hole yarn over pull through so now we have four stitches on our nook what you need to do is push it right through and get those stitches on the cord which acts as your first double pointed needle be sure that you don't pull it all the way through because that will mean you will lose your stitches and you will have to start over you can put a little paper clip or something on the end of that one to stop it from pulling through the stitches or you can just leave a tail that's long enough so that you don't have to worry about that now where you would be using a second double pointed needle we're going to use the nook again to pick up the next four stitches so you put it through your next crochet stitch yarn over pull through another one yarn over pull through third one yarn over pull through and your last one for that double pointed needle which would be your second one you yarn over pull through so now we have four stitches one two three four and you push those onto the cord as well now what you need to remember as well is that you need to leave a loop of the cord so that you can differentiate between which double pointed needle in inverted commas you'd be working on as the cord is what you're going to be using so if you were using the magic loop method with a circular knitting needle it would work out the same way now we need to pick up the last four stitches to be the 12 stitches in our pattern to start knitting the knocker so that's one two three and the last one So there you have your 12 stitches that you need to start knitting your knocker and those are basically your three double pointed needles that you would be using. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to start your knitting. You'll see in Leisure Arts they will tell you or even in the, the knocking handbook they will tell you that you need to go through your stitch from the front to the back and go either under or on top of the cord to do your stitch if you're knitting flat that would make a difference because you'll have twisted stitches otherwise as we're busy knitting in the round it doesn't make a difference and it's much quicker and easier if you just take your nook and you go straight through the front of your stitch yarn over and pull through so I'll show you that again you, there's your stitch push it through the front 
yarn over, pull through. That's a knit stitch. Next one, through your loop, yarn over, pull through, and your last stitch for that double point needle would be yarn over, pull through. So now you've knit all the stitches on your first needle, basically. Now what you need to do is pull out the cord. That's the the one that's got the loose end on the back. And you're going to pull that one through. And then you're going to rearrange it, redistribute it so that you have the short end on your next double pointed needle. And you'll be doing this all the way through. Keep shortening them and pulling them through because your working needle you're going to thread back onto your cord. There's the loop that you need to leave and we're going to knit the next lot. To stop the laddering this is where the easy part comes in that's difficult with the double pointed needles. You're going to take your first stitch, yarn over and pull through You'll see now on the back of the work that those two stitches are right next to each other. So there's no laddering there. Whereas double pointed needles you have these two hard needles that you're trying to get as close as possible together and cotton doesn't pull as tight as the more stretchy yarns that you get. So you put it through, yarn over, pull through, straight through the front, Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. You've finished your second needle. You can pull through your cord again and redistribute it so that you have the short edge where you're going to start knitting. Get that one out the way. And you pull your nook through. Now we're going to do the last needle for the first knitted round. So again, you put your nook in from front to back, yarn over, pull through. You'll see your two stitches are close together so that there's no laddering. And then we do second stitch, yarn over, pull through. Next one is yarn over, pull through, and another one of yarn over, pull through. Pull your cord out, redistribute it again so that your short end is basically going to be your side that you start with now. You pull that one through and you pull your nook through and we're ready to start with our increases. So, what we're going to do is knit the first three and then we're going to make one between those two stitches. Knit that one and then you'll start seeing how the increase edge is going to be nice and tight together on that side without any laddering in it. So let's start. So we're going to do our first stitch. Run over, pull through. Next one, yarn over, pull through. Then yarn over, pull through. So those are your three stitches. Now we need to make one. I'm going to do is pull this cord out of the way a bit so you can see where we're going. You'll see there is a little bar in there, it will get easier as you do your first stitch but you'll see there's a bar there and we're going to need to go through that bar to make our stitch but you need to come in underneath it so you need to go put your nook through this first one's a bit tricky, but you put it through and you come in underneath it. 
like that. The first one's a bit tight. It will start getting easier afterwards. So you've come in under the bar and you take your yarn and you pull it through that first one and then you that's your last stitch so that would be your first increase that you've made using the make one from the bottom there you'll see it as we go around let's try that one again on the next one so you redistribute your cord again push and hook through make sure that you don't lose that edge that you've threaded through that's why it's supposed to be nice and tight the fit between the cord and the, the nook and we've pulled that one so we've got a length there so you knit your stitch be sure to pull it nice and tight together so you don't have any laddering in the row so you yarn over and pull through so you pull that nice and tight so you see there that there's no laddering next stitch through the front yarn over pull through and that one yarn over pull through now we need to make one so you can loosen that cord a little bit and what I do with the first few rounds just to make sure that it's loose enough to go through you go through the space between those two stitches through the bar just loosen it up a bit with your hook by pushing it through from the front to back and then when you're ready to make your your stitch see if you move it there you can see it between the two so you go under your cord under that bar push it through no that's not going let's try that again under the bar just loosen it up a bit so we have that one okay yarn over pull through so that bar will lie nicely then your next knit stitch for the last one on that double pointed needle there we go pull your cord through redistribute it round and now we're on our last increase for this round so it's on we have five stitches there one two three four five now we're on our last double pointed needle per se make sure we don't pull too much of that one through so that one goes through there pull it through nice and tight no laddering on the back second stitch yarn over pull through third one Yarn over, pull through now for that tricky first increase. Go under your cord, under the bar, to the front of the work. I'll show you that again. So it's under the cord, under that bar from the back to the front one out the way and you yarn over pull it through that first one and your last knit stitch on that needle don't worry about your first row being a bit tight it's just until you get that first increase out the way that it does that but then you'll find it becomes easier and easier as you as your knocker becomes that bit bigger to get the rest of them done so that was our first increase round so now we have five stitches on each needle what I'm going to do is increase a few rows 
and then I can show you what it looks like as you're going along. I've done a few increased rows so you can start seeing what it looks like. There are our increased stitches. So you'll see that there's no laddering between them. You'll see as you get work bigger and bigger the spaces once you pull it a little bit then you won't see where the actual stitches came out. There's no laddering so you can't see where the the two pieces of cord to be meeting like you do with double pointed needles and as it gets bigger and bigger the increases become a lot easier to do because you can now see the bars you're supposed to be going underneath of. So I'm going to do another increase to show you now that it's a bit bigger. So we're going to knit our seven stitches do an increase and then at the last one. So knock that first one, keep it nice and close together so that you don't have any of the laddering. So that's two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Now we need to make one. Now you'll see if you stretch that out of the way a bit, move that cord out of the way. There's the bar that you're supposed to be going under that top bar there. So you go under your cord, come back under that bar. So you go under that bar. Yarn over, pull through, and knit your last stitch. So we need to redistribute our cord again. So that it's at a workable length. And we're going to knit another one. You can see how that increase works nicely. We're going to knit that first stitch. The first seven. So that's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. Now, so to do our increase, we have to go under that top bar that's between the two stitches. So you go under your cord and then you come back through under that bar. Go on over, pull through. And you knit your last stitch. So we have one increase left on this round. Don't forget to pull your cord all the way through and you redistribute them as well so that you don't land up with all your stitches on one part of the cord you have to remember to keep these pieces separate so you know where you are when you have to do your increases. So we're going to knit that stitch. Remember to pull nice and tight so that you don't get any laddering on the back. That's two Three, four, five, six, 
seven, now we need to do another increase. So you pull your cord out the way. You need to increase in that top bar. So you need to go under your cord. Come back under that bar. Yarn over, pull through. And if you pull that cord, you'll see your stitch again. And you knit your last one. And that's how to do your increases for the front of the knocker. And if you pull that into shape again, you'll see that you don't have any laddering on your increase edge. I will have a part two now on how to do the pulled edge before you start with the de decreases to do the back of the knocker. Thank you.